Let's go mudlarking at Packhorse Bridge. Well, here we are, still in West Yorkshire, and today we are on Packhorse Bridge. There was a time when Hebden Bridge was no more than a bridge that crossed the River Hebden. Everything that's here today grew up in the 1800s through the Industrial Revolution. But there used to be a Packhorse Trail that came over the mountains here, and it crossed the bridge and on its way. So we're here today to have a look what we can find in the River Hebden, just below Packhorse Bridge. Let's find out what we've got. There's Packhorse Bridge. There's a very deep and fast flowing river. But I found this little outlet here, so let's pop down and have a look. It's a bit muddy, watch it on slip. We'll see if there's anything in here now. Pop your wellies on. And let's see if we can find anything. Ooh, it's a bit muddy. Ah, well, there's a piece of china with nothing else. And I think it's got a pattern on it. There's the back. And there's the front. So that looks like it's quite modern. Hmm. Something there. Ooh, got it. Is it plain or patterned? Plain. All right, we're not going any deeper. That suddenly drops away. Let's have a look where this water's coming from. see what we can find. Aha, we found another beach. It's very muddy underfoot. Very so we've got to be slippery mud. Yes, we have to be very careful we don't slip and get covered in mud. Nothing new there. Oh steps on the floor. Ah, oh, that's quite convenient. China on the beach. Oh yes, let's pop straight over and have a look what that is. Do you think that's plain or patterned? Plain. We'll have a little look along the beach and then we'll pop in the water. It's very sandy here. We were chatting to a man this morning who said about finding lots of bottles in the woods when he was a child 40 years ago because it was so sandy, it was very easy to find them and dig them up. 
What's that? Oh, that's a nice little piece of pot. Nothing written on it. But it could be an indication there is more to find. It's a broken glass and terracotta. So there's some modern rubbish being washed in. But is there anything ancient? Have a look along this little bit of muddy sand. Right. I think it's time to go in. But right, pop your wellies on. Be brave because it looks really cold. Oh, it is cold. But there's something there. I've muddied the waters now so we can't see it. That's a nuisance. Okay, let's go through the rain. See what we can see. Lots of little tiny pieces of white pottery. Really quite clean though. I can't see any bits of metal. Aha, what is that? Do you think that's a piece of pipe stem? See if you can turn it around so it's then easier to see. I live in hope. Let's have a check. Oh yes it is. That's quite rounded there. That looks like it's the mouth end, doesn't it? I wonder if that is the very end instead of we usually find middle pieces. Oh, I'm pleased with that. I've got a brick. Oh, Phil's found a brick. We've already found a brick on this trip. Mm -hmm. With that name. Right. I'm sure it was that name. And son. Right. Now it just says that unlimited. Ah, but so it says Elland. Yeah. So we'll have to check how that developed. But there we are. We couldn't see the S last time, so Sharat. There we go. There we go. And while I've been talking to you, I've seen something over here. Now I'm feeling optimistic. Maybe this is an area we'll find lots of pipe stem. So let's have a look what this is. It's only a little piece. No, no. Oh. It's a piece of china with a little bit of pattern on, but I did think when it was like that, this bit sticking up, I thought it was pipe stem. What have you found? It's an unusual piece. Terracotta or something, see a ridge? Mm. Of a bowl that's been glazed. Possibly, yeah. Very big bowl, mind. It's not much of a curve on it, is it? <laughs> no, it isn't. That's huge. But it was huge. Right, yeah. We've just come over the Pack Horse Bridge. And here you can see the trail. It winds right the way up over this mountain. Just the beginnings of it here as it twists around. But it's strange to imagine that long before they had a valley road between Halifax and Burnley, even before the Rochdale Canal, and well before 1839 when they built the Manchester Leeds Railway, this climb, that narrow bridge that we've crossed, they formed what was the Pack Horse Trail. And people brought horses laden with goods over the mountain tops, down into the valley, over the bridge, back up the other side, heading for places like Hebden Stall, which is right up on the top of here, high above Hebden Bridge. And where is Hebden Bridge as the community flourished in the 1800s, really finding its own in the 1850s when William Barker realized that they couldn't just produce cloth, but turn that cloth into clothes. And soon it became known as Trouser Town. Lots of history in those parts especially with the crag coiners who were a bunch of counterfeiters and their leader was hung in 1770 and is buried in the churchyard there. Here are a few pieces of china I found all in one very small area. Probably took me about 20 seconds to pick up. We've got bunches of grapes, flower petals, lots of plain pieces and this which is Cornish ware because of the raised blue areas. Phil's left this brick for us to look at. It's a summit brick. Now that's a lovely stone wall, covered in moss and algae. Very pretty. This is a relaxing little beach. Shame we can't see in very deep because of the colour on the water. Very brown. What have you got, Phil? River glass. Ooh. Well, it, oh, that's a weird one. There's yeah. actually See, something in there. And it's recently sheared on this edge in the storm, look, but the rest is very mm. well worn. I wonder what that was. Can you see there's like a nail in there? Mm. I'm not sure. 
double O or a pattern. Now it is the pipe stem. Oh no, again it's a piece of ceramics I think. Let's have a look. Well, it's pretty. It's blue and white. Shame it's not a pipe stem, but still I'm happy because this all goes in to help my mosaic collection. Oh, that's nice. It's a rim. It did have a pattern there. Lovely edging on it too. As we wander along, I'll tell you about my mosaic making progress. I really want to make a mosaic. I'm collecting, I'm gradually getting more and more pieces of really nice colours and some white background, but I've been really nervous to actually start the mosaic because I'm not very good at art. Well, this is something I told myself for years. And about a month ago, I decided I'm going to see if I could actually learn to draw. So I've got myself some art materials and I've started to draw and I think that maybe I'm going to be able to make something better of a mosaic than I thought. So I'm a lot more enthusiastic to make a mosaic now. So keep your eyes peeled. At some point in the near future, I am hoping to make a start on my mosaic. And I've been wondering with my art, if it's the sort of thing I could include in our mudlarking channel or whether to start a complete channel to plot my progress from complete novice to hopefully somebody who has some success with art. So let me know your thoughts on it, please. I wouldn't mind knowing. Do you think I could incorporate it here or shall I start a completely different channel? How would anybody be interested in seeing somebody who isn't very good at art getting better? Oh, there's a pretty colour piece. Oh. Now that's not... Oh, wait a minute. Let's give it a wash. I think it may be Cornish wet. Yes, it is another chunk of Cornish wet. I wonder if it's all from one big jug or lots of different things. Whoop. <laughs> another friend. We always meet a lot of dogs when we do this. And another piece of river glass. What do you know? It's another piece of rim. And Phil's found somebody to talk to again. He always seems to pick up with people to chat to. So we'll get on with our mudlarking, just you and me. It's a long climb up the hill to Hepton Store, but well worth it when you come into the narrow cobbled streets, work your way through and see the street signs that speak of the history of the place, like Weaver's Square, telling the story in its simple title of the history that was founded on the hand loom weavers that lived in the area. Also, as you walk through the narrow streets, you're aware of the big windows on some of the buildings. The oldest house in the village now is Stag Cottage, which was standing since 1580. But the big windows that fill the front of these buildings were to allow the maximum light into the home because it was expensive to try and light the room with candles or other means. So daylight was what was needed. Another beautiful scene in the village are the churches. Yes, there are two. The original church, well, that has been founded since 1260 and was dedicated to St. Thomas a Becket. But now it is but a ruin. But what a beautiful ruin. How atmospheric as you walk amongst the cloisters, looking up into the tower, through the windows that are no longer glazed. The building has stood this way since the great storm of 1847 when it was destroyed and has continued to stand as it does even for people to walk through in our time. But they weren't without a church because when the great storm took away the church dedicated to St Thomas of Becket a new church was built and this church itself had its problems because when they built the new church it was struck by lightning in 1875, but repairs were made, it stands proud and is still in service today. 
But the thing that this place is also famous for are some of the graves that are here. There are graves of famous poets, but I'm interested in the grave of one man, and he was known as King David Harley. He was the leader of a gang known as the Crag Coiners, the Crag Vale Coiners, or also sometimes as the Yorkshire Coiners. They were a group of men who back in the late 1700s supplemented their low incomes by cunning means. They would take gold coins, snip the edges from around them, then mill them down smooth, and then use all the gold that they'd collected to forge new coins, hoping no one would notice the difference. It was a lucrative trade, but one that couldn't be ignored forever. It came down to the betrayal of one of the gang that led to King David Harley's arrest and then his execution. And he is now buried here in the churchyard where people come and lay their coins because after all these years, his memory and his notoriety still lives on. I couldn't resist it. I'd found 5p while mudlarking in the day and I had to lay it on the grave myself. Right, we've decided to walk on and see if we can find another area along this river. But on the way, I found this. So I thought I'd show you. Because it's very pretty. Nice blue and white stripes. Can't beat a bit of blue and white striped pottery. tree doesn't look very well does it? We'll have a look at the roots, the big huge root ball that's blown over. Oh tight, it's a bit steep and a bit slippy but I think we can make it. Oh, get a toe, hold tight, pull on the stick. Nearly there. Well done everyone, we're up. A man down there asked me, have you lost your sheep? <laughs> And I said, no, it's in case the wife falls in the water and I can hook her and pull her out. That's right. So this is the root ball of the tree. There's a foxglove growing there. So you can tell it's been down a while. Because if I remember correctly, foxgloves are biennials, which means this grew last year and died off. And now it's going to sprout and flower this year because it's very well grown for the early spring. Well, midwinter really, it's December. Lots of moss growing on here too. What do that man's digging for? Oh yes, the man digging up there, I know what he's digging for. And if I was this shovel on Could be path. truffles, could be gold. That is one lovely log. Look at this big fat tree trunk. Excuse me, can I have you to come and show us some perspective on this tree trunk? Arms out. Let's have a look how wide it is. It's pretty big. It goes right up to the sky. A lot of moss on the rocks and the tree stumps. And these cliffs don't look very stable. Lots of crack rocks hanging down. Put it this way. Mm -hmm. Those cliffs, these rocks, I get a feeling at some point... Yeah, they were up there. Yes. <laughs> As you can see, there's lots of them in the river too. So we just keep an eye out. If we hear rumbling, everybody run. Look at these walls. They're so soft. It's like a big green cuddly teddy bear. Or, I suppose, the hungry caterpillar. There's an amazing tangle of tree roots here where the river has washed the soil from between them. It's very difficult to actually make much progress because you keep getting your foot stuck. There's modern broken glass there. Sand, isn't it? There is a lot of sand, very sandy area. Hmm. Oh, 
it's rich pottery again. Again, the problem is because it's sand, it washes away so quickly and gets deep very quickly. So you can't win very far. Hmm. It's a little frustrating, but a gorgeous walk. Even if we found nothing in this trip, then I'd be more than happy because it's like being in a winter wonderland with all the trees that have lost their leaves or the roots sticking out. These plants here, I'm not sure what they are. I don't think they're wild garlic. I think it's too early for those. Oh, look at that. Oh, I like that. That's a piece of blue glass off a poison bottle. Maybe there's more of it. Let's have a look. Well, there's another piece of blue and white. And there, I can see some more river glass too. Piece of white river glass or clear. Oh, there's a brick with oh, something written on it. I can't quite see what it is. Oh, there's some river glass. Still a bit sharp. Recently smashed. There's some green. I just noticed my new grabber is starting to creak. Sorry about that. Oh, there's a big chunk of blue and white. No, not Cornish weird, but blue and white. Clean this brick off now. It says summit. I think we've had a summit brick before. Lots of pieces of freshly broken glass. And another dog. Seen something here, Phil just picked this brick up and threw it down. But from where he is there, he couldn't see, but I can see. Oh, a clay marble. We didn't see that. No, I know. Yeah, there's a stone. Was, yep. I, I, that's what I spotted. Was this yes. terracotta? And that was underneath it, and you couldn't see it. You want to see what else I got? Oh, go on then, show us what you've got. I've got some bits of glass. Right. Now you can see that's green. Yep, it's over. Yep, that's green. I thought that was black, but it's actually, I think, that's green. That's very dark. Oh, yes, look. That's a nice colour green. And I got that little bit for there. Oh, piece of willow pattern, I'd say. It's just a bit of brown glaze. Yep. It's a foot of something. Glaze inside again. And that's the one I liked. Have a look at the other side there. Oh, look. That's a lovely pattern, that's isn't it? That's very nice. Well done. doors as they walked along the edge. You're not bad at this, you know. Again, you hang a bit, even if I do miss the clay balls. <laughs> Another friend. We never get lonely mudlarking. There's so many dogs. Them, but two balls and a ball thrower in the mud. Look at this quaint little passing place. Mind you, it doesn't look very safe, does it? If you look at the way that's rotted. Hmm. But we'll move along swiftly. Now this is a public footpath, but with my knees. And three million steps to climb. I think we'll give that one a miss, but come over here and let me show you something. Now, I love houses with lots of glass. Our house has got a fair amount of glass, but nothing like this one. This looks like something from Switzerland. It does, it's all very pretty, but look at that. 
oh yes I could be quite happy in a house like that and on the gate they have beware of chickens <laughs> the daffodils just starting to poke through ready for a lovely spring display well I've loved it here I just find it amazing to realize that little tiny bridge was the main thoroughfare for all of this region four five hundred years ago and what a wonderful time in the river too hope you've enjoyed it if you have then give us a thumbs up share it with all your friends and don't forget come back next time and join us on more adventures as we go mudlarking river walking and beachcombing all around the uk and beyond bye for now <laughs>